people say, welcome to everyone to Mikhail's annual meeting for the kind of end of FY21 and the beginning of FY22. Thanks for joining us on Zoom this evening. Of course, this is the second year in a row we've done this. And um, it's it's got its pluses and minuses, right? But I just, we'll, we're gonna do a few things to acknowledge what this last year has been for us. But I do just wanna thank you all at the outset for joining us tonight. I know everybody's quite busy at this point in time. So really appreciate your being here. We are recording the meeting just so folks know. Um, I'm just going to take a minute to review the agenda and I'm going to ask Halima to go ahead um, and share the slide deck um, when she's all ready to do that so that I can just give a quick overview of the agenda for everybody as we kind of um, lay out what we're going to be doing for the next uh, I guess hour or so. Uh, we're not gonna go beyond 6.30 because my board has a meeting after this. So there it is up on the, there we go. Thanks, Halima. Perfect. So just so you know what's coming, we're going to um, have a, just a moment of silence in just a minute. I'll talk a little bit more about that as I introduce it. Then we're gonna have just a interactive um, activity where for those of you who developed a word cloud before, we're gonna develop a word cloud answering the question, what have you seen or done over the last year that has required courage? You can write a word or a phrase for that. And then kind of give the, the update on our goals, what we're seeing coming down the pike for us this year, what things we've accomplished and started. And then we're gonna end in some breakout groups um, so that you actually have a chance to talk with one another, listen to one another, share ideas, There'll be a staff member and a board member in each of those groups as well. And uh, we won't do a full report out at the end. We'll just do, each group will share a top, maybe two takeaways from their group. And uh, the board member and the staff in each group will be helping facilitate and take notes on that. So um, Halima, we can move to the next slide, please. Thank you. I just wanted to take a moment of silence. It's been obviously a, a very challenging year marked by loss for all of us in so many ways. So I just wanted to take a moment of silence to recognize, remember, and, and cherish those who perhaps we've lost or things that we've lost. If you wish to name someone and write it in the chat, please do so. But otherwise, I invite you to now join me in a moment of silence. And I'll close that by saying peace to all of you. And thank you again for being here tonight. Um, not only have, has last year we've experienced lost, but loss, I should say, we've also seen a lot of um, really moving things and things that have, Kalina, you can queue up the next slide, things that have brought, um, brought us acts of courage. And um, we'll talk about our event that's gonna be focusing on courage in a few minutes, um, but, we have um, an activity here. Halima, would you like to go ahead and speak to this and ask people what to do? Or I should share with them what to do. <laughs> Thank you. Um, everyone, if you could please either use a browser or your phone, um, if you could just go on this website, menti.com, and then you could just put that code there. Um, you'll have options to enter three words or three phrases. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here so I can go on there and we can look at the word cloud as you're entering the information. Did everyone get the code? Is it, oh, it's in the, is it in the chat? Um, no, I didn't. It's 8770. I'm putting it in the chat. It's in the chat. Thank you.
So again, you're just going to menti, M-E-N-T-I dot com and entering the code, which is 8770. Are people able to access it? No, I'm not. No, mine says it's not open for voting. Oh, oops. Please wait for the presenter to open it. Sorry. Oh, one moment. I'm the sorry, link what? isn't live in my chat. I think we're making it live. I think we're going ahead and making it live right now. If you could just refresh your screen or uh, if you could enter it again, I think it should work. Mine's working now, Helena. Yep, I think it just turned on. Great. some responses here. All right. And the larger the words get, it's, it is because folks are entering it more than once. Are you all able to see my screen just fine? Oh, yes. Yes, we can. I love that love is centered over there. That's good. You can always use more of that. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Sharing, love, patience. Oh, this is fantastic, isn't it? I think with all the changes that has brought about, um, patience is key. Definitely need that compassion. That's beautiful. Oh, that's wonderful. Being an instructor. At the bottom, <laughs> that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, Halima. We can um, we can capture that, right, and save that. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. I think um, those are the things that uh, we just want to remember and thank each other for, and um, all of that because it's so wonderful to see what we all have taken from this past year and what has has offered or what we've seen people do that required courage and what we have offered ourselves that required courage. So maybe Halima will stop uh, screen share right now and um, fairly certain David Kay, our board chair has come on and um, it would be great for David to go ahead and give us a few words of Welcome, and if I can remember how, I don't know if I can spotlight you, but uh, David will start speaking, and as long as everyone else is muted, we will um, see him. And David, I welcome Here you. I... Your remarks. There you are. Here I am. Maybe I've, yes. I've hopefully I've appeared. Yes. Good evening, everybody, and on on behalf of the McHale Board of Directors, I just want to welcome and and thank each of you for taking the time to be with us this evening. Uh, I also want to recognize um, and thank uh, all of the providers and the members of the coalition for the hard work that you do in our community year in and year out, uh, but especially the extra work and, and different types of work you've all had to do and to handle over the last uh, 15 to 18 months. Uh, we know that everybody's worked uh, extremely hard to connect uh, with adult English learners, not only for classes, but also to make sure that they were connected to other vital county and community resources, such as food, shelter, and health care. Uh, and we would like to recognize that. And I would also like to recognize and thank 
Mikhail, our executive director, Kathy Stevens, and the entire staff, Rudy, Christine, Halima, Monica, and uh, Mareka, for their extraordinary efforts in this last year, uh, successfully helping Mikhail and the coalition to navigate what uh, were really some extremely challenging times. Uh, and lastly, I, I would just like to introduce and recognize uh, all of my fellow Mikhail board members who are uh, with us tonight. Uh, and I will um, call them out by name, although I, uh, with the Zoom, I don't know, uh, <laughs> I don't know who can see who, but they, trust me, they're here. Uh, so thank you to Stacy Parkinson, our vice chair, Beth Myers, our secretary, Gloria Hawes, our treasurer, Sean Klein, Tim Leiter, Joan Schaefer, Gabriel Martinez Cabrera, Rodney Redman, and Venki Venkatesh. Uh, thank you all for being here tonight. And we have a lot of information uh, to provide and a lot to get to. So I will turn things back over to Kathy to get us started with the program. Great, thanks David. And thank you to the entire board and everyone else for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, we are now gonna spend just about the next, not even quite 15 minutes. Um, and Monica's gonna help us keep time. So none of us go over our time on our slides. Um, just to give you some updates and, uh, and some looking ahead about where we've been this year and where we're going. I think, um, and uh, Halima, why don't we go back to the slideshow? You were actually, you anticipated that, thank you. And um, what we will do is just walk through some of our updates. And I'm gonna start by just saying that um, this year was really unique as we know. And what we, have found from our work, we have certainly have faced our own set of challenges, but for whatever reason, things have come together. So we've really been able to see our work knitting together, coming together in some unique ways around some, some themes. The first of those is equity. Obviously, it's been, there's been some regional, local, regional, national conversations on equity and the McHale staff went through a process by we, which we developed an equity plan over the last year, and we are starting to implement that. And you know, when you look at that first slide, we see that equality, same box, equity, you give everybody what they need to see, in this case, see the baseball game. But as we, and we will be applying this across the board in our own internal policies, in our grants processes, in how we think about supporting the coalition of, of ESOL programs to grow and expand. And what we will be doing are a variety of things that look at different ways to kind of take some new directions to enhance um, access to our programs. Rudy's gonna talk a little bit in a minute about our community learning groups that are underway. But what we really also are, are seeing are things around how we do our funding making sure that we're delivering resources in a way that we can reach more people with more ESOL classes. And some of the barriers, you know, of course, what, we, what we'd really like to get to is a picture, not like the top left, but like the bottom right, where there are no fences so that there are no barriers or that the barriers are almost diminished. And I know many of you have found for your classes um, this year, that there are <laughs> barriers beyond just kind of learning English, right? There's no, for some students, there's no access to Wi-Fi. Um, some students may be calling in on their phones and once they reach their minutes for data for the month, they don't attend class anymore. So we wanna make sure that people have reliable, affordable Wi-Fi and we have entered into a partnership with Comcast by which we can pay for and provide several months of internet access for a family, for a household. And we will be in contact with some programs. We've contacted some of you already to say, hey, listen, who do you have that we need to serve in this way? There's also very recent federal um, legislation that was passed an emergency bill on providing Wi-Fi and Comcast is participating in that as well. The other barriers that we know about, of course, are also just equipment. Is it best to attend class on a phone? Well, no, a student can't maximize what's happening on Zoom with that. So providing Chromebooks and laptops and desktops and things like that are things that we, we want to do and have started doing. 
Um, so access is a big one, partnership, new partnerships to do that. Then we also know that um, vo having voice and advocacy are um, other two other big areas. And so we're looking to establish what we call a learner leadership group so that we build learners voices from across the network into our planning, into our advocacy, and um, really incorporate that in a, in a much more robust way, in a more genuine, robust way for that. And sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. Um, we are very lucky going into FY22 to be in what I consider a better financial position than I had anticipated at this time last year. Uh, the county um, has approved a $100,000 increase in our budget. And the board and I will be talking about how to use that really to build up some of our infrastructure and address some of these things that have to do with equity and access and voice that we've been talking about. Um, Halimi, you wanna just go to the next slide real quickly, please. And I will talk about, you know, what we see coming down the pipe a little bit. Oh, back one, actually, you were fine, thank you. Um, you know, we know this is gonna be a year of continued transitions. We don't know how many transitions, but we're continuing to transition. Are we all online learning? Will we be back in person? Will we be back in person as close as these folks are sitting to each other? Certainly the CDC seems to indicate that yes, we are there for vaccinated folks. So we, want, we know we will be working with all of you as you assess how your program needs to work. Who is vaccinated? Who is not vaccinated? How do you approach these things with sensitivity and caring but also I do believe, and Michaela has been part of the countywide um, committee on this, it's important for all of us to help everyone who can get vaccinated so that we achieve herd immunity and that we kind of continue to get people back into a, a state of being where we can be with one another. There's a balance there and we will continue, You know, this might give us great opportunities to look at some classes remaining online, some classes being all in person, some classes may meet two or three times at the beginning, get people assessed. The instructor can get to know the learners. Then you go to a remote learning for the, the bulk of the session. And then you come back at the end to do your post uh, session assessments and things like that. I think there are a lot of um, models out there and I think um, the sky's the limit in terms of our creativity. And then Halima, you can go on to the next slide. And um, I would just say we're, this is something we're playing with um, based on our equity plan. This is a new logic model that we're working with. I don't expect you to read all this or look at all this, but we're really looking long-term outcomes. How do we move the needle to, and again, for me, equity in this sense is meaning serving more people with qu the quality that they need and the type of English learning opportunity that they need and to help make the changes that we wanna see in the community, whether it's around economic prosperity, workforce development, more instructors in our instructor pool for our, our programs, more instructors that have lived ESOL and experienced themselves, so are better representatives of the community that they are working with. So I will just pause there. Um, if there are any just quick comments. I, I think we've still got David highlighted, so I don't know that he wants to make a comment, but we can take him off spotlight. But um, if there were any quick um, comments or questions, I just wanted to pause briefly and entertain any of those. And um, if not, we'll go ahead and, and move on. I have a comment. Yes. Um, uh, my name is Diana Rivas. I'm one of the teachers. And uh, I noticed that most of our students are female. I would like to address the male population. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think the male um, are believing in the teaching. I think we need to address them and bring them on. And mm -hmm. women are making a lot of sacrifices uh, to take the classes and sometimes the men don't help them. So I observed that through, mm -hmm. the, through my classes. Uh, so I tell my students, if you want me to talk to your husband, I'll be happy to do so. So they can cook, they can take care of the children while they're uh, learning. I yeah. mean, I think it would be nice to 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 bring those uh, men in. <laughs> Great, thank you. All right. 
So. I'm going to turn it back to Rudy right now then. So, and we'll go back to the slideshow. Thank you for your comment, Diana. I appreciate sure, it. Sure, sure. No problem. Thanks, Kathy. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to give an um, overview of uh, Mikhail's support for uh, ESOL programs this year. In addition to our standard um, meetings on TESOL standards, um, our, our series of topics uh, in program administration, we, we uh, were able to broaden our offerings um, this year. So um, we uh, were able to support five participants in the TESOL um, English Language um, Teaching Leadership Management Certificate Program. Um, and I understand that's ongoing or just, just finished. So we're looking forward to hearing how that went. Um, we are also really making an effort to um, take our story um, um, uh, upward and outward. Uh, um, for first, we're, we're um, giving a presentation at the MACE conference, which is the, the State Adult Education Conference. And that happens to be uh, tomorrow and Friday. Um, so if, if you are uh, available, please join us for our, our presentation on Friday morning at nine o'clock. Um, and we're very excited um, to unveil our program administrator toolkit, but the online version. Um, so this will be um, a searchable uh, toolkit that will um, be available for free for all Montgomery County residents. Um, we're excited because it has a new section on distance learning um, and we'll be able to update it regularly. Um, so um, I think Halima on the next slide is a little bit of a, a, a screenshot of, of what it looks like. Um, so it has all the content of the hard copy version that we published in 2019. And I just wanted to say, give another um, uh, thank you to all of our um, adult ESOL programs that contributed their um, expertise and teaching, uh, sorry, um, administrative tips for uh, this toolkit. Um, it's, it's a great way to highlight uh, their programs and their work too. <clears throat> Next slide, please. And then Kathy mentioned community learning groups. Um, this is a new initiative that um, is being piloted as we speak. Um, it's designed um, for um, to help learners um, get used to uh, learning in a in a, in a, a class setting. Um, these are nine week introductory classes that um, um, build pathways for learners and for new instructors. Um, and so we are really um, going to focus on East County to start with because from our data, we know that uh, there are the fewest um, ESOL sites in East County. Um, we have been, um, uh, attempting to increase the number of classes in that region of the county for a number of years. Um, and the efforts um, have just not been sustainable for many different reasons. Um, and so we are um, taking a new approach by working with local community groups and community leaders to identify groups of learners um, who are interested in, um, in taking an introductory class. And at the end of this class, they will be referred to um, existing ESOL programs. Um, a, a big part of the community learning groups program also is the recruitment and training of new instructors um, and from um, ELL communities. Um, and just to say that we are going to um, have our first training of new instructors starting next week, in fact, and we have a very promising group of seven um, new instructors. Um, so that's that's really exciting for us. And we're going to expand then um, and have a number of, of CLGs in East County uh, in July and August. And they these new instructors will be teaching those classes. Um, and then uh, another um, advantage of this program is that uh, through working with local community organizations, um, we're able to identify new organizations who are interested in starting up or in developing their own adult ESOL programs. So I think um, I will turn it over to my colleague, Christine. Great. Thank you, Rudy. So I'll talk a little bit about instructor updates. So earlier this year, a survey was sent out to all the instructors on our mailing list. Uh, and the purpose of this survey was to identify the needs and learning preferences of instructors in the network. 
the information we captured on the survey helps to inform the topics and types of professional development opportunities Mikkel offers. Not surprising is that online teaching techniques was the number one requested topic for workshops. We offered several workshops, sharing sessions, and resources on the topic of online instruction this year, all of which can be found on our website. The survey also revealed an increased interest in online professional development. This year, Mikhail invested in a learning management system, an LMS, which is a platform that enables us to offer online courses. Our first online course is Foundations for Adult ESOL Instruction. This online course is for instructors, teachers assistants, and volunteers new to the field of adult ESOL, as well as anyone who may be interested in the field. This online course will be offered approximately every other month, and to date, we've had 25 people who've completed the course. The next session starts June 4th. In addition to this course, we are planning to develop more online training opportunities. This past year, we worked with a consultant to redefine and restructure our advisory group. The McHale Advisory Group, also known as MEG, is a volunteer group with a purpose to provide and support McHale in offering appropriate and relevant programming for the provider and instructor network. Individuals from the advisory group represent a cross-section of McHale's providers and include both program staff and instructors. We are currently interviewing potential candidates for a two-year term and we'll announce the new members next month. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you, Christine. And I think Monica, we could go to Monica next. <clears throat> Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Monica Casañas and I am the communications and outreach coordinator for Mikhail. And I am here to make sure that you are connected with us. So we are Mikhail, a coalition for a connected community. So if you have not connected with us yet, I'm asking you all to make a commitment to do this tonight. So what do I mean by connecting with us? I'm going to go ahead and um, in the chat, include the different tools, different social media platforms that you can use to connect with us. Let me know if you see it or if you have any issues um, seeing it. So yeah, yeah um, great. So we have a Google group that we use internally for uh, program administrators and instructors, and they're able to talk to each other internally. We have Mikhail TV on YouTube, which has videos, recaps, workshops, and meetings. We have Facebook, which features current information, classes, and new news items. We also have Twitter. We encourage everyone to tweet at us if there's something that you have a question about, uh, something that you wanna kind of turn our attention to, if you wanna just talk with us and uh, share with us a success story, tweet at us. We have Instagram. We love to see your work. I can't tell you how appreciative I am of everyone that I contact um, to get photos. Um, sorry, you might hear my, my three-year-old daughter in the background. Uh, and we also have LinkedIn. So if you're an instructor or an organization we work with, please connect with us on LinkedIn. And of course, our website. It's a place to post your jobs, class information, to post items on our calendar. And something exciting about our website is that it's now available in different languages. We have it available in Amharic, in Spanish, in French, and Chinese. Now, next slide, please. Great, if you haven't heard about this yet, we have an amazing event coming up um, at Mikhail. It is Courage is Contagious. We are so excited to have Congressman Raskin join us on June 1st for this event. It's a free virtual event via Zoom to celebrate our work and learn how courageous acts of adult learners, instructors, and civic leaders connect our community. I personally consider Congressman Raskin a hero, and I'm really looking forward to hearing his views on courage. So yesterday was a deadline to receive a free tea kit when you register. I'll give you an effective. I think we may have some more if you register tonight. So I'll also go ahead and put the link for that in the, um, in the chat. Please make sure that you join us. Please share this with your networks, with your students, with your friends, with your family. A thank you again to some of the uh, organizations that have tapped 
to have some of the instructors and learners in a video that we'll be showing. Um, so yeah, please make sure to join us and I'll turn it back to Halima. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so we're going to go in breakout groups, uh, about I think six uh, breakout groups will be there for 15 minutes. And some of the things that we would like to discuss is thinking about advocacy, both advocacy with a capital A, uh, meaning on a system uh, uh, systems advocacy targeted at changing um, uh, laws and policies, both on the state level, county level, or perhaps even at the national level, or advocacy with a uh, with small a, community advocacy and uh, things uh, within individuals. So, thinking about that, what issues should Mikhail focus um, on its advocacy, and most importantly, who should we direct this advocacy to, uh, both in a formal advocacy or informal elected officials um, and other groups or individuals. Um, Mikhail's staff will be taking notes uh, during the breakout groups and the board members will be facilitating those discussions. Great, so I think we're going to the breakout rooms, right? Someone sent us? Good. It does move quickly, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, good. Just make sure every, it looks like everybody's back. Great. Um, well, thank you, everyone. I am looking forward to hearing just, you know, the top takeaway, one or two takeaways from each group. I don't know if you decided who is going to report out, but um, let's go ahead and see what we've got. So group one, who is someone from group one? I don't even know who was in that room. I can look, though. So uh, Gloria or Halima? Halima, do you feel comfortable reporting out since you took notes? Okay. Some of the things that came up was access to technology um, and also other resources for students, like such as food, uh, information on citizenship, uh, immigration in general, um, and overall just providing resources for learners. Uh, no, I'm sorry, providing resources for instructors so that they can then give it to their learners. If else wants to add to it. Yeah, thank you, Halima. And I would uh, expand the technology to say it's access to internet, it's access to devices, and it's some standardization among the devices or computer literacy that is necessary to make the other two successful. So it's broader than just access. And and these are need the collective needs that were a theme that came out of your group. Great, thank you. So then I will go to group two and Rudy or Stacy, uh, what were the one or two top takeaways from your group? Um, Diana will be pleased to hear that we were followed up her suggestion and we think she's hit the nail on the head. Um, oh my God. <laughs> the male learners <laughs> out there and, and men that we could use for instructors too. Yeah. Um, the program I work at has both men, but but um, Rudy pointed out that it's most of the programs are two thirds women, one third men. Um, so um, there's some learners out there that we need to capture. I think men are shy. And so I think the community learning groups, what we talked about was that could be a really wonderful way if they're with friends or um, other soccer dads or whatever that go together, that might be a good way to access them. Um, Marissa talked about, um, and I think this will, we'll hear this a lot, are the multiple access points, um, especially on social media. Uh, Maritza talked about a, uh, the shorter classes she has in Facebook, but you gotta combine that with um, prepping for that delivery of services. And I'll raise my hand first to say, I wouldn't know how to get on Facebook and do a class. So um, yes, please pair the access points with teaching some of us how to do that, both students and, and especially instructors, so. Great, thank you. Lots of good discussions. I hope you had enough time for them. So Christine and David, we'll go to your group next. All right. I'll oh, Christine, I think you got muted all of a sudden. All right, here we go. All right, so we talked about the issue of helping our learners and helping them to advocate for themselves and the need for more legal assistance, you know, what is currently available to them. 
it's, it's, the system is just overburdened right now. There isn't enough to support them with issues such as housing and so forth. Also advocating for mental health and services to help our ESOL learners and providing more support for them. Um, also we talked about um, advocating for unaccompanied minors that might be coming to our area and providing resources for them as well. Wow, huge, huge issues and so important and, and something that we're going to be seeing so much of. Great, thank you. And, and I shouldn't say seeing so much of, we know there's a lot of need for mental health and we know we're going to have more and more um, people coming to the county from Central America. Uh, where are my group four, which is Monica and Beth were the staff and board in there. I'm voting for Monica to report out. She was taking notes. <laughs> and Venky was with us as well and helped facilitate. I apologize, Venky. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In our group, we talked about having a focus uh, on business businesses and uh, asking them to um, possibly um, provide scholarships for people to include us in their charitable giving. Uh, to really make the business community aware what it means to go through an ESOL class. Um, and just making everyone aware that learning English um, is a goal, it should be a goal. Um, and uh, also supporting kids in that once English learners uh, are able to speak English, they're supporting their kids learning um, and just showing the community how investing in parents is so critical. Uh, and then we just talked about creating some bullet points, elevator speech that we as a network can use to talk about our work. Um, and also talking about uh, creating more circular programs, systems of support for learners. So talking about the bus system, if the bus system stops working at 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., that could be an obstacle for people who are trying to get home from taking a class. Uh, and then really just focusing on specific barriers that uh, learners may have. And it doesn't have to be uh, something huge, but really just humanizing uh, what a typical learner might have to go through and also humanizing what a success may be for them. Not something huge, like they just started you know, their own multi-billion dollar business, but they were able to fill out an application and uh, making people empathetic to, the, to, to that, to the learner themselves. Right. Wow. Lot, lots of work for us to do in advocacy. We've got uh, one group left, which I think was Joan and Marika in that group. Am I right on that? That's right. Um, how about if I start, Marika, and you can join in as can anybody else. Um, we, we too spent a good bit of time talking about the lack of men in our classes and talked about some of the things we need to do is, are to have more classes in the evening and more classes on the weekends at times when people can come. And, and we also pointed out that uh, Mikhail has been doing some workplace-based classes, which is a really good thing. And more of that post COVID would be a great thing. Um, we also talked about making sure that the classes are uh, focused on things that men need and women too, but need to go to work and, and uh, some of the workplace language that would be useful. And then we had a brief chat about so many of our learners come to class and they spend a couple of hours in class and then they go home and, and in their homes they speak their native language and often in their workplace, um, particularly people in construction go, you know, speak their native language in the workplace. And so advocacy with a small a is to advocate for our learners to set aside 15 or 30 or 45 minutes every day to speak English with their families or their coworkers and how much of a difference that can make. Great, thank you. There are obviously lots of issues to address with lots of different bodies, whether it's the county council or our state delegation, or as we've just talked about, our business leaders um, and our fellow community members. So I think this, this is really helpful because we wanna, do, wanna get some organizing thoughts out there. And I love the idea that one of the groups had about creating some bullet points so that you have them at your fingertips so that people have them to speak of. And of course, we're really excited to start this learner leadership group where we can get the learners in on this as well, make sure that our thoughts match theirs and um, proceed in kind of a unified fashion. 
I do want to just say two other quick things about some things that we're, we're working on. One is the council, the county council has asked us to be part of a work session some point this summer, I think it could be early fall, with Workforce Montgomery, with some other folks in the community to really take a, a deep dive to look at our workforce development system, where ESOL connects with that, and what we can be part of to really make um, perhaps some big investments. There is some Recovery Act money that the county, I think, has that they would want to invest in this. So stay tuned on that. I will need input from everyone on kind of what they see. We have some good ideas from our staff, but I, I really do want to um, have a, a global thought process on this. And then for those of you who use the schools and other spaces that are reserved through the Community Use of Public Facilities Cup, I will be in touch with you because um, I need to talk with them to find out just kind of what the options are going to be around school-based classes. Shannon, some of you may have, and, and certainly our linkages programs, you may have, be in touch already, but um, some of this may come down to school, you know, just each school is going to be different. We don't know yet, but we will be, I'll be trying to coordinate whatever I can through us for you so that you can be as successful as you, as you can be with that as well. So um, obviously we have a lot that we've done and are doing and look forward to doing. We never can do it all. And we appreciate hearing from you if you think we should uh, shift our focus or shift our priorities and always appreciate the dialogue to figure out how we do that together, how we go forward together and continue our support. I look forward to seeing you in person. Um, I'm fully vaccinated and looking forward to some in-person meetings. And um, I know we miss that and we get a lot of benefit from that. So I'm hoping that we can do that. And with that at 628 and knowing that um, my board is gonna be meeting immediately after this, I want to say, why don't we conclude this meeting and thank you for your time and give you two minutes to get your dinner on the table or whatever you're doing with your evening and uh, appreciate everyone's participation in the network and in your own programs and have a safe and lovely pre-summer evening out there. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.